My brothers and sisters in Christ, today the church celebrates the Feast of St. Andrew, and most years this feast comes right after the beginning of Advent, the strange calendar year in which we actually get to the feast day at the very end of one liturgical year instead of the beginning of another. In some ways, it's very appropriate when St. Andrew's feast day leads off a year, and that is because amongst all the apostles whose feast days we celebrate throughout the year, St. Andrew has a special claim to be first in certain ways. Now, certainly first in prominence are Peter and Paul, but Andrew, as the brother of Peter, plays a very special part. The gospel passage that we hear today speaks of Peter and Andrew as a pair in this account as they are called as fishermen and leave their nets, followed shortly thereafter by James and John. But the Gospel of John gives us a very different angle, and that is of Andrew coming first to find Jesus and then once called going and telling his brother Peter that they have found the Christ and to come and see, to come and meet him. The reason I like to focus on this is we hear in the first reading on this feast day this idea of how is to one to come to believe if no one tells them, if no one evangelizes them. And so even amongst the twelve, this is a clear commission of the apostles go forth to spread the gospel to the ends of the earth. But imagine, before he was ever called, ever known as apostle, what if Andrew had just let it stop there that day? What if he had met Jesus and went on his merry way? What if he had never told Peter? It's an interesting branch, a what if of alternative history. What if the one who was to be the rock, the beginning of the church, had not himself first heard the word proclaimed? And so this reminds us of the the urgency of mission that each of us has as a Christian, not just bishops or those in the apostolic succession, but that each of us baptized into Christ, has uh, has a vocation to evangelize. And by that, that doesn't necessarily mean standing on a street corner with a megaphone to, to tell everyone about Jesus or on Twitter or whatever it may be, but it is through our word, our explicit experience and invitation, but most of all, our witness of life, the manner in which we live, the manner in which we love that invites others to Christ. We can fall into a lazy disposition in the modern world, assuming that everyone knows Jesus by now. We can think of evangelization as a work of the past and the sense of missionaries having to go forth to new uncharted places of the earth to bring the faith. And But nowadays it's gone everywhere there, so we don't need to tell people about Jesus. And that is why the the phrase that has been coined in the recent decades of the new evangelization stands as very important. The new evangelization is different because it's not necessarily about taking the gospel to new locations, but it is about the representation of the faith, either to those who have heard the gospel proclaimed and lost their way and they need, need an invitation home, or in an increasingly secular society those who may have heard it or seen it superficially, but nonetheless have never had a true encounter with Jesus Christ, who don't know what our Christian faith is about. They are among us, my brothers and sisters, and they need our witness. They need our invitation. Or else, how will they come to meet him? And so on this Feast of St. Andrew, we pray that each of us may have, through the intercession of the Apostle, and through his model and his witness, may have the courage to go forth and to help to lead others to Christ so that they may come and see. St. Andrew, pray for us.